Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's Wednesday evening. I think it's the 26th. I'll look at my... Yes, it is. I never remember the date. My short-term memory is shocking. But it is the 26th of January, and it is me, Annie Bennett, here with you. Um, from one or three places, you are either watching me from the Home Baking Business Community UK. Hello, if you are there. Or you are watching me from my Annie Bennett Business Facebook page. Hello, if you're there. Or if you're a member of my Home Baking Professional Society, you might be watching from there. So hello, wherever you are. Um, do say hello. Do pop a comment in to say that, that you're here. Um, and if you can do me some thumbs up and things. That helps all the, the Facebook algorithm and it gets people notified that I'm here. So that would be jolly nice if you could do that for me. A few little um, thumbs up or hearts or smiley faces or whatever it is that you can do. <laughs> no. um, so, yes. So this evening we are talking a wedding cakes this evening. Um, as many of you know, uh, that is my main thing, wedding cakes. Um, you can probably see behind me all the pictures that I've put up. I'm going to have to put my glasses on here. Um, of the wedding cakes that I've done. Um, I started my business about seven years ago, something like that, with the aim to actually eventually almost exclusively um, do wedding cakes. And that really is what I do now. I don't really take on birthdays and celebrations. Um, oh, hello, Alex. Hello. Yes, absolutely. Um, have a refresher. Absolutely. Um, yes, I don't really do uh, birthdays and celebration cakes because I do. I'm so busy with all my other bits and pieces that I do as well. My courses and all sorts of things um, that I really only just take on wedding cakes now. Although I do have a couple of um, previous wedding customers who asked me for their children's birthday cakes, which of course I do. Previous customers are an exception. Uh, but generally I'm pretty exclusively wedding cakes these days. Um, so I thought that I would talk you through some of the sort of ins and outs of wedding. Oh, I've got a heart. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, the ins and outs of uh, wedding cake, um, not, not just making, but selling the whole business of, of wedding cake. Um, creation um, and then at the end of this session which should only be about half an hour at the most but at the end of the session I'll tell you about the course that I've set up for anyone who wants to um, sort of fast track learn how to get themselves into a, a really good position to to make and sell wedding cakes so um, as with most of my waffle Wednesdays these days um, there is a, a blog post up on my website to accompany this. That sounds very professional, isn't it? A blog to accompany my uh, my appearance this evening. Um, but it does help me, actually, when I if I write a blog post about what I'm going to to speak about, um, then it. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. Um, evening. I see. I don't know what time of the day is. Um yeah, so if I write a blog post, it sort of gets my thoughts sorted out and I can get it in an order and you know, I can work it out exactly what I want to say. And then I have notes to to speak to this evening and then it's all written down. Hi, Jenny. Hello. Because um, I know some people much prefer to read things than they do to sit and listen to someone waffling on. Um, so there's a blog post as well. And the link for that um, will be going up in the Home Baking Business Community. I can't remember the time, about eight o'clock, I generally program that in. So that will pop up at, at about eight o'clock for anyone that wants to read, um, read, you know, what I'm just about to tell you. <clears throat> so let me tell you what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Do you know, when I was um, <clears throat> when I was in teaching and I was in head teaching and everything um, and used to go to sort of how to do a presentation, the thing was always tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them what you tell them, and then tell them what you told them. <laughs> so I'm coming on to tell you what I'm going to tell you now. So there's six points, really. Obviously, that the whole thing about wedding cakes and selling wedding cakes, there's a lot to it, as you can imagine. There's a lot to it. Um, but I've sort of, I've rounded it up to six sort of 
uh, points, six sort of advice advices, really. Um, and the first one is sort of fairly obvious, really, but it's the technical know-how, the, the baking um, and the decorating. You've got to have a fairly sound, solid basis, particularly to making, you know, sponges. Um, Fruitcakes are less popular with wedding cakes, but people do ask for them. So if you've got sort of go to trusted recipes and the way that you bake those, um, then that's a really good start because you don't want to be if you've got a, a wedding cake booking, you don't want to be starting off by being stressed at the actual baking stage. Um, if you're going to get stressed, you want to leave it till the very end. <laughs> um, but having a really good you know knowledge of or a sound knowledge be confident in you know baking your sponges um and having recipes um for different sizes because you're going to be asked for you know anything from perhaps four inch um cakes up to 12 i, I can't do bigger than 12 because my oven won't won't make it um so i do everything from four to 12 and i have uh recipes that will make all those different sizes. So I know um, if I'm asked for a, an eight inch cake, um, it'll be eight, eight, eight eggs, for example. Um, so I have that, that sort of basis. I don't remember everything in my head. I write it all down because goodness me. Um, but as long as you, you're sort of, ba you basically know the, you know, the sponge recipes and you, you can do that without too much, thought and without too much stress and that's good that's good um a range of decorating skills obviously if you can do both um buttercream finish and sugar paste finish um then you're going to just get, generally get more bookings um to start with um if you limit yourself to one or the other i know some people aren't fond on buttercream some people aren't fond on sugar paste um but you are going to limit the 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 number of bookings that you get so if you can expand your skills and practice the one that you're not so good at um then you're going to benefit yourself i mean if you prefer one or the other you can specialize later you know once you've got the bookings coming in and things like that oh good evening oh we've got lots of emojis there fabulous wedding emojis thank you <laughs> um but knowing a little bit about you know royal icing would be would be good knowing how to make um, sugar flowers, uh, basic sugar flowers. Roses are often asked for, um, you know, sugar sprays with little bits of filler and foliage. It's good to have a basic knowledge of that under your belt so that you can create those. Um, knowing how to make drapes and knowing that the, the, the words for these, so the difference between a drape and a ruffle, for example, is good to know. Um, so that you you know you've got a few techniques under your belt um, and don't be afraid to to learn new things as well so it might be that um you know you're asked for a cake and often it's it's well in advance <clears throat> so you often get a long time um to to you know to practice things um you might be asked for a cake with a technique that you perhaps haven't tried um, or you haven't perfected yet but if it's like a year in advance you know you've got a, a little bit of time to actually get that skill under your belt um, because I'm a true believer that anyone can learn anything um, if you you know you practice and put your mind to it so don't limit yourself by saying oh I can't do that um, you know make yourself open to learning new skills and you will find that you know the bookings will will come in far far quicker OK, so that's the first one. Technical know-how. OK, the second thing you need, um, as with all businesses, but perhaps even more so with a wedding business, a wedding cake business, is to have all your, your business set up really robust and solid, particularly your terms and conditions. Now, every business should have terms and conditions. If you are selling things, you should have terms and conditions. Um, is very frowned upon by the powers that be if you are selling things to the general public without some sort of terms of business in place. Um, but with wedding cakes, you're you're protecting yourself as well as the customer, if you like. 
Um, so your terms and conditions will have things um, like, you know, the what if things go wrong clauses. So what if um, there's a cancellation from either party? Um, what if <clears throat> um, the cost of things go up? What do you do? What if um, the venue has to count? All those kind of things. So have terms and conditions in place, you know, how how do they pay you? What's you, what are your expectations for payment? For example, if you've got solid terms and conditions in place, um, then then you've got that to to go by. You know that it's, it's your business policy to do this or to do that. Okay. Oh, hello, Zoe. Managed to get your daughter in bed. Fabulous. We love it when when children go to bed on time. <laughs> mine are mine are grown up now, so. I don't have that worry, um, but well done. It's a nice feeling that, isn't it? When they're finally asleep. Um, so yes, get your terms and conditions. Um, if you want some sample terms and conditions, there there is a, an old version of mine in the home baking business community. Um, but you, with all terms and conditions, you want to make them your own. You don't just want to lift someone's and just put them in as yours. You've got to read them carefully. Uh, ideally, you've got to have a solicitor look at them so that they're definitely yours. Um, but that might be, you know, further down the line a little bit. But you've got to got to have them. And things like you've got to have your pricing, um, you know, strategy set up. Um, you've got to be able to price properly to make a profit. There is a profit to be made in wedding cakes, definitely. Um, if you charge your worth, if you allow yourself to charge <laughs> uh, we'll come on to that in a second come back to that in a second um so and, and have a, a an ordering system whereby you know if if couples contact you for a, a price are you following up um if they order from you are you keeping an eye on them as you go along because i say sometimes it can be a year two years in between them booking and you actually doing the cake so are you keeping in contact every so often just to remind them that you're there and you haven't forgotten about them kind of thing? So have that kind of system in place. Um, so the the basic, you know, your, your basic business, you've got to have a, a solid base to that. That's the second one. Thirdly, um, it's a really good um, habit to get into to to think and to, to look at you know, what's trending with cakes, what's popular in the cake world. Um, look through magazines, um, look through, you know, uh, um, Instagram accounts and websites. What kind of cakes are popular? Um, if you can um, follow like wedding stylists and wedding planners on Instagram, because there you will see the kinds of cakes that are popular, for example. Um, Pinterest in my experience when a bride says can you do this it's nearly always a Pinterest picture <laughs> so Pinterest so look through Pinterest what's trending on Pinterest what's what's um, popular on Pinterest okay so all those up-to-date things keep up with the, the latest fashions which leads me to the fourth point which is being the expert now I know when you start out you're thinking, oh, God, I'm far from being the expert. But you've got to pretend that you are. You've got to exude a certain level of confidence. Um, because if you're not confident, your couples that are trying to book from you aren't going to be. So even if you don't feel confident, you've got to pretend that you are. <laughs> um, there, you've got to remember that mostly... Um, they are not going to have ever bought a wedding cake before. So they're not going to know what to do or the process or how to go about it or what's a good wedding cake or what they need. So you are you are a guide to them as well. OK, they might ask for something um, that, uh, you know, you as a, a experienced cake maker will know perhaps isn't going to work. That the classic example is, you know, a four tiered buttercream cake in a marquee in the middle of July. I would really strongly guard them, you know, warn them against that. That's that's a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> um, so 
you know, make all the pros and cons of what they want really clear to them. You know, so you, you are the, you know, you are the experienced one. Um, things like how big the cake needs to be. Um, I mean, I always have, where is it here? This is my sort of cake sizes guide. So that if someone rings me up or I have a consultation and, I, you know, one of my questions is, well, how many people do you want it to serve? Um, and they say 90, for example. Then I'll look at here and I'll say, oh, OK, um, if you want two tiers, that's perhaps a 10 and a 12. If you want three tiers, that's perhaps a 7, 9, 11. Um, four tiers, you know, five and so on. So you, you, you look as if you, you know, you're in control of this. You, you know what they need. OK, as I said, to start with, that's a tricky one, but pretend, exude confidence. <laughs> uh, but don't be afraid to say, oh, I'm not quite sure. Let me I'll, I'll get back to you on that one because I'll, I'll just need to make sure, you know, you don't have to bluff your way through and make things up. In fact, that's probably even worse to make things up. But have have a bit of knowledge ready um, so that they feel confident with you. OK. Um, 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 um. Um, and part of that, part of being the expert, um, you know, when you give your price and I rarely, rarely, rarely give a price if I'm consulting, I will take all the information and I will say I'll put a quote together for you and I'll email it to you. Um, they, they'll they possibly want, a, you know, a price guide roughly. Um, and I'll say, oh, it might be sort of around or between this and this, depending on, you know, but I've got to be. Um, I've got to, you know, look carefully, uh, but don't be bullied into giving a, a price. Just say, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get back to you. Um, you know, you'll have a price tomorrow or the day after or whenever it is. Um, and never, 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 when you give a price, try to justify it <laughs> or apologise for it. That is your price. That is what you uh, are going to charge for what they want. And, to, you know, they can take it or leave it. Don't haggle. Don't justify. Don't apologise. Oh, well, it's that expensive because this, that and the other and uh, this. Don't do that. That that makes you look less confident and less less what you're doing, if you like. Um, if they do come back to you and say, oh, it's a bit on the pricey side, you'll say, OK, well, um, if we have this instead of this, that will bring the price down a bit. Um, you know, if you have a, a drape instead of ruffles or, you know, whatever it is, that will bring the price down. Um, but don't whatever you do say, oh, OK, well, I can do it for um, 50 quid less then. You're, you're running into all sorts of issues if you do that. <laughs> stick by your guns, stick by your guns. And this brings me to number five, which is you have to have a little bit of resilience. You have to have a little bit of armour when it comes to wedding cakes. If you, and I hate to say this, but, you know, tough talking from Annie here. If you are the kind of person that crumbles when someone criticises you in the tiniest bit, I would say that wedding cake making perhaps isn't for you. Not that you're criticised a lot when you're making wedding cakes. Yeah, um, you know. If you've got everything in place and you've got your terms and conditions and you communicate, the chances of that are, are you know, are less. Um, but you will be asked for quotes and you will put together quotes and sometimes you will spend quite a long time putting together a quote for perhaps a complicated cake. And you might not hear from them ever again. OK. But the important thing to remember with that is that we don't know what those couples are thinking. Don't assume, don't assume that it's because you're too expensive. And in fact, in my blog, I've put that in capital letters. <laughs> you don't know what's going on in that couple's world. You don't know what other influences they have. You don't know, um, they might be checking in with other bakers as well um, to see what kind of things uh, people are offering. They might have a you know, a mother-in-law that's offered to make the cake for them. They might have changed their plans after all and, you know, decided to go abroad. There might be all sorts of reasons why they haven't got back to you. Um, 
And it might well be that you're too expensive for them, but that's not the only reason. So please don't assume that if a couple hasn't got back to you, oh, that must mean, that must mean I'm too expensive and I must bring my prices down. Stick by your guns. You want to do this to make a profit. Okay. Don't give in. Don't give in. <clears throat> um, I think one thing to, one way to look at it, and I was told this uh, a while back by someone who's experienced in business, and it's a really good way to look at it, is that you're not selling them a cake, you're helping them to buy a cake. And there's a subtle difference there, isn't there? between selling something and helping them to buy something. So if you are, you know, you're helping them to buy, you're guiding them, how big do I need it to be? Um, what kind of designs could, could we possibly have? Um, all those kind of things. Even if they don't eventually go with you, you are going to be leaving a really positive impression with them. So it might be that actually in the end they decide to choose a, another wedding cake baker who's perhaps more experienced in, I don't know, punk or gothic cakes. I don't do anything like that, so it might be. But you are going to be leaving them with a really good positive impression of you because you were so helpful. Um, and it might be that they then have a friend or whatever or you know family member who needs a cake. Actually, that lady there would be perfect for you and they'll recommend you. So think about it as helping them to buy rather than selling, okay? And it makes it, you know, makes the whole process less stressful if you do that. <laughs> what else have I got here? Um, oh, yes, and the last one. So we've got six this evening. Um, the last one, if I just scroll up on my notes so I can read it. The last thing it's important to do um, with business as well, but particularly with wedding cakes, is to get visible. Um, I've done a few Waffle Wednesdays, haven't I, on social media and getting visible. Well, the same very, very much applies. Don't assume that um, all your audience need to be people that want wedding cakes. That's not the case at all. Um, I have quite a few followers now on my Instagram account. Um, and they're by no means all, you know, couples or people that are looking for wedding cakes. There are all sorts of people that have seen me do, you know, things that they're quite interested in. Um, and of course, they're not going to want a wedding cake. But if they know someone that does, <laughs> you want your name to be, oh, yeah, that leading lady cakes. Yeah, I, I follow her on Instagram, you know. And they'll pass your, your message on or they'll pass your details on. Because it's all to do with that thing that I'm banging on about all the time, which is know, like and trust. On your social media, you want people to get to know you. You want people to like you and you want people to trust you. And that works. It's absolutely essential for wedding cakes because these couples are, you know, spending hundreds of pounds on their cake. They want to know that they can trust that you're going to produce the goods. And if you've got everything else in place that I've talked about, then there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that. OK. And now a couple of pros and cons. I haven't written this in my blog. I'm sort of going to do this off the top of my head, really. <laughs> um, let's talk about the cons first. That's sort of the, the downside. I don't really want to talk too much about the downside because um, I don't really want to put you off. But I've talked about being resilient. You've got to be a little bit resilient. You've got to have a little bit of armour. You've got to see yourself as the, the, the business owner rather than you as a person. If you see yourself as a business owner and your job is to make a profit for your business, then some decisions and some, you know, communications that you have are, are far easier to deal with. OK. Um, but you you have got to cope with the fact that people won't come back to you. OK, it's just part of the deal. All the time I get people that don't come back to you. In fact, let me tell you a story. You'll like this. Um, in fact, it was it was last night. So it's really fresh on my memory. This last night I had a message via a wedding directory that I'm on. Um, and I get quite a few messages through this directory, which is fabulous. And it was, um, can you do me a wedding cake for this date, 
this many tiers, this decoration, whatever it was. Um, and I sent, a, there were a couple of messages went, gone back and forth for me asking a couple of more details and things. But eventually I gave them a price. And th it was this morning, first thing this morning, I, you know, I sent a message with, well, it, it's going to be around this, you know. And then at lunchtime, I was looking through my emails and saw that there'd been a message come in via my website for exactly the same, <laughs> exactly the same cake. <laughs> same person, same email address. So weirdly, it was a different date. So I'm not quite sure what was, that was all about. But anyway, same cake, same whatever. Can you give me a quote for this cake? Now, I have got a feeling that this person doesn't realise that it's the same person that she contacted on this wedding directory. It's hitched, the wedding directory. I've got a feeling that she's gone, oh, blimey, perhaps that's a bit out of my price range. Let's Google and find some websites. <laughs> so I think she's come back to me without realising it, asking me for a price for this cake. Um, which actually I think is quite funny. Um, <clears throat> um, but I'm not bothered in the slightest that she thinks I'm too expensive. That's my price. That's, you know, I'm not going to do it for any less than that because that's what I charge. Um, so if I'm too expensive, then she'll have to find someone else. Um, but I thought that was quite funny, the fact that I don't think she realised um, that my, you know, contacting me via my website, I was a different I was the same than the person she spoke to on Hitched. So there we go. So that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> um, so those are the sort of down, and of course the stress of it. I, I know a lot of people say, oh, I couldn't ever do wedding coats because of the stress. Um, you can negate the stress a little bit if you're organised, if, um, if you plan things in advance, get a lot of the things out of the way. For example, if I'm doing a wedding cake, I don't know if I've got one up here. Um, no, I haven't. Um, a wedding cake, you know, that's got you know swerves of of sugar flowers or roses or whatever it is. Those sugar flowers, I can make weeks in advance, so I can get those out of the way and get those done. And then when it comes to the you know the time sensitive you know baking and covering time, I've actually got less to do, and there's less stress involved because the baking is fairly routine for me now. You know, um, I know how long it takes. I know, you know, just organize my ingredients. I've got all the right ingredients. so I'm not missing anything. Um, get my um, tins and all my parchment ready the night before. If I can, that helps as well. So so get yourself organized and into a routine. You're going to have less stress on the day. Um, you know, get into a routine with things like doweling and stacking. Know about those. Um, know about um, if you're transporting the best ways to transport. Um, I generally, depending on the size of the cake, generally um, transport two tiers at a time. If it's a bigger based cake, I will do three tiers because it's much more solid and it's not going to go anywhere. A couple of um, seven tiers that I've done, I've, I've had to transport into, into bits and then build when i get there um i know other bakers they don't they don't construct at all for transport they construct they take them all in bits and then construct it really depends on you know how well you work and and how you want to do it um but you get into that routine you get to find what you prefer and what you don't prefer if it's less stressful to build it all when you get there then build it all when you get there you know um so it, it's it's a question of getting organised. Um, oh, I think we have a question. Oh, let me put it up, though, because that's a good question. How do you charge for transporting and setting up at the venue? I charge um, the standard um, HMRC rate of 45p, because that's what I can claim. So I charge that because that's a good figure, which covers everything. And a 45p a mile. And then I charge on top of that, um, I think it's 50, at the moment I'm charging £15 an hour for the transporting and the setting up. Sometimes I, I charge more if I've got to 
Um, for example, if I'm placing fresh flowers on a cake, I do that at the venue, so I charge the time for that. Um, but generally, it's so much per mile plus the actual time it takes for you to do it. Okay, that's that's my rule of thumb when it comes to, to charging. I hope that answers your question, my love. Um, but yeah, have everything organized and the, the stress is far less um, than it could be if you're all suddenly last minute and having to be up till three in the morning making your sugar roses or whatever it is. Okay. Um, I have had a few really, really stressful cakes <laughs> to do. Um, one notable one was last August when I had, this was the third booking I had in a week. Um, and it was the, the Saturday. I think I'd had one on the Tuesday, one on the Thursday, one on the Saturday. And the Saturday one involved half a million, it seemed, macarons and mini cupcakes, as well as the three-tiered cake. Um, I hadn't planned my time well enough. Um, and on the Friday evening, the, <laughs> the bride emailed me at 11.30 in the evening saying, oh, can you set the cake up an hour earlier tomorrow because the, the rehearsal isn't going to take, you know, the wedding ceremony isn't going to take as long because we've had the rehearsal. So um, I think I was up at five the following morning, half four, might have been earlier, to finish off everything. And I was good by the time I got home. <laughs> but partly that was my fault because I hadn't planned it all in properly. Um, I'd spent the Wednesday doing something else where I should have been doing cakey things. So, you know, it, it's all to do. There's, there's so much less stress if you plan things properly. Um, another con is that people think they're going to get, you know, bridezillas. Very, I, in practice, I get very, very few of those, um, if at all. You know, I get you get brides that are absurd and it's usually brides, you know, um, Sometimes, you know, I have uh, same sex couples as well. Um, so sometimes it's grooms. <laughs> but um, more often than not, it's the bride that's in control of the cake and everything that's going on. Um, and they can be assertive, you know, because of course they are. They, they want a perfect cake for their, their day. You know, they've got every right to be. Um, but if you communicate, if you um, if you're clear, if you're clear with your terms and conditions, what you will change and what you won't change, or if you're going to change things last minute, you charge for them, all those kind of things, then things are less stressful. So that's why your terms and conditions are, are really important, you know, for the bride that suddenly changes her whole design a week before the wedding. Yes, I can do that, but it's going to cost you this. <laughs> and that, you know, that's me as a business owner saying that that's what it says in my terms and conditions. So, you know, but the pros, the pro, oh, hang on, we've got a boom. Uh, what have we got here? Wedding cakes is a path I'm quite interested in, not advertised and blow me down. I'm secured my, oh, you've secured your first order of a three to semi naked cake. When pricing up, I didn't take into account the extra time that will be involved to liaise with the venue and florist. Lesson learnt for next one. I said, and you have knocked the nail straight on the head there. Lesson learnt for the next one. That is where experience gets you. When I first started doing wedding cakes, there were so many things I did wrong and so many lessons that I learned. But everything that you do wrong and every mistake you make, that's not, oh, damn, I'm useless. I've made a mistake. It's, oh, that mistake is going to help me next time because I'm going to make sure I don't make that mistake or I'm going to change my terms and conditions or I'm going to change my pricing. So everything that happens, if it's a, a mistake or some sort of fa fail, learn from it and know that next time that's not going to happen because you're going to put something in place. Okay. Hello, Mandy. Mandy's asking about cake stands. Do you go back for them or does the customer return and they receive the deposit? Yeah. Um, that is a good question. What I do with mine, yes, it's a um, returnable deposit. So they pay me, I think it's 30 pounds at the moment. Um, depending on where the wedding is, if it's a close by wedding, I'll say, you know, you've got a week or whatever to get the stands back to me, which is not a problem. If it's a wedding that's a little bit further away, what I will do is I will um, take a box with postage prepaid on it, 
of course, the couple pay to cover that, of course. And then I say to the venue, could you please just pop it in the box, tape it up and then put it in the post? And every venue that I, I work with says, yeah, no problem. We can do that for you. Um, and I learned this lesson because one of my earlier weddings, I said, oh, yes, um, cake stand. I'll take your deposit, thinking I was very clever taking a deposit and very businesslike but not realizing that what I hadn't said was how it was going to get back to me. <laughs> so I had to go an hour and a half drive to get the blooming cake stand back, which of course nibbled into my profit, something awful. So now I learned from that, actually, I need to actually say, either say to them, you've got to get it back to me or you've you know, got to pay extra so that I can, it can be posted back to me. I hope that's answered your question, Mandy. I hope that's answered your question. Um, and in my terms and conditions, I have a time limit for, you know, when the things have got to get back to me. So if they're bringing them back themselves, do you know, I can't remember what I've got in my terms and conditions. I don't know them off by heart, but there's a certain time limit. So they can't you know, keep them for years and then return them, and, you know, because you need them for other customers, don't you? Um, purchase a selection of cake stands. I have got a few cake stands. Um, I generally keep the, I sometimes include the higher in the cake, you know, in the cost of the cake. Um, or if it's, you know, I'll just put a nominal fee to cover the cost of the postage to get it back to me, as well as the, you know, the returnable deposit. Um, but I find that I have found that I've just bought them as couples have asked for them. So if they said, oh, have you got a nice stand like the one in the picture? Um, I'll say, you know, I could probably get hold of one and I can, you know, hire it to you. So you don't necessarily have to buy a whole range of them. <laughs> um, buy them as, as perhaps you need them. OK, I've got some. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, that white one. Um, I've got a selection of those. Um, of different heights. I've got three different heights and they're metal and they're quite sturdy so that they'll they'll withstand quite a heavy cake. So I've got a selection of those. I've got a wooden log, you know, a slice, wooden slice, which is good for your, you know, your semi-naked cakes. And I've also got quite a nice glass one as well. Um, so I've got a little selection of them. Yeah. Um, well, do I, I think these ones, I think these ones I got from eBay. I think these, these are eBay ones. Um, if you can't find them, let me know and I'll see if I can find the link for you. Um, but yeah, weight, weight is quite a, um, an interesting one. I had, in fact, it was the wedding with the half a million macarons. Um, leading up to it, the bride was emailing me, you know, twice a day you know, can we have this? Can we do this? Can we have this? Um, have you got a cake stand? I said, oh, yes, I can, you know, hire you a cake stand. Oh, oh no, it's all right. Someone's got one we can we can borrow. When I got to the venue, they'd obviously just went, went to late, gone to Lakeland and bought one. But it was a really, really flimsy, um, not plastic, what's the acrylic perspex that, you know. Um, and I took one look at that and thought, that's going to shatter into a million pieces as soon as I put this cake on it. <laughs> so I had to say that luckily the caterer was there and I said, I'm really sorry, but I can't put the cake on that. They're just going to have to do with that. She said, Oh no, don't worry. I'll tell them. Um, so there is a, you know, that's part of the, the communication. Um, what I should have said to them was make sure you get a cake stand. That's, you know, able to withstand quite a lot of weight because they are heavy, these cakes. Um, and as you get into wedding cake making and you, transport them to your cars you will you will know just how heavy they can be um so i hope that's answered your question on that but yeah if you need a link for that I'm, i'll find it and, and put them um, put it up there for you um but the main advantage the main con no the main pro um of doing wedded cakes of course is just the fact that you are providing something and you're part of a couple's day um and you are, you know, you're just 
producing something that you know is admired um i love that um you have to get over that oh there's a bit of a flaw there and I'll, I'll change that and it's not quite right you have to get over that um i've found in all the cakes that i've done um i could find at least 10 things wrong with every single one um but on the whole, the people that are, are receiving them and looking at them don't see the little flaws that you see. <laughs> they see that beautiful cake that they've imagined and, oh, my goodness me, you know. So that that's that's the main, you know, and the pride knowing that you've, you've created this cake and you've set it up and, you know, and it's there and you're, uh, and I'm at last a wedding cake maker, which is what my aim was to start with. Yeah. Um. Oh, what have we got here? Hello. Sorry, you, you say Facebook user because I don't know. I don't know your name, but hello. I've only done a two tier cake once. Felt like I need to start weightlifting as I carried it from my foot. Yeah, it, they can be really, really heavy, really heavy. And this is another reason why some cake makers transport in, in single tiers. Because um, I have transported a couple of three tiers and they are you know just about liftable and you have to be careful you have to know your venue if you're going to have to take it up two flights of stairs which i have done previously um you know that you're not going to get away with you know stacking it already you're going to want to do that in bits so that's that's another you know thing to get used to know the venue that you're you're taking it to um, get to know the ins and outs. Can you park near the door? All those kind of things you, you sort of learn as you go along. <laughs> um, like, for example, you know, first couple of weddings I did, uh, I parked up, got the cake out of the car and sort of heaved it up to the reception. We said, oh, hang on, I'll find someone for you. And you're stood there waiting with this cake so now I generally leave the cake in the car, go and find where I'm putting it, go and find the person who's in charge, say, right, I've got to put it there, right, I'm going to get the cake now. And then I can come straight in and put it down where I, where I uh, need to be. Uh, Rasika, hello, Rasika, hello, my love. Um, so it's all, those, it's all those little things that you learn on, you know, as you go along, when you have um, something that not necessarily goes wrong but something you think oh gosh that was a bit of a trial next time I'll do it this way um but I suppose that's that's sort of life in general really and that's cake making in general isn't it you do something and you think oh there must be an easy way to do this <laughs> I'll do it that way next time um so yes yeah, so that is the sort of ins and outs of wedding cake uh, the business of wedding cakes um I absolutely love it I absolutely love it. Um, I get really excited when I've got a, a week and it's generally sort of at the end of the week because most weddings are sort of Friday or Saturday. Um, and I think, oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. So the beginning of the week, make sure I've got the ingredients, you know, in or coming. Um, Thursday might be my baking day and then Friday will be my decorating day. And then, you know, Saturday I'm off. Um so, yeah, and it's it's just really exciting knowing that you're, you know, you're producing this thing. Oh, what's the question here? I suppose some experience is needed before doing, not necessarily, not necessarily. What you need when you're doing a wedding fair is you just need a little bit of confidence. That That's what you need. Um, if you can get a bit of experience before doing one, then it, it, it you know, it can't not help. Um but don't think that you can't do them just because you haven't got much experience. Um, just be confident. Do your research, you know, know what you're talking about. Know, you know, have your cake sizes, have an idea of your prices, um, have an idea of the, you know, say, do your research, have an idea of the kinds of cakes that people are looking for. Um, I mean, with wedding fairs particularly, don't try and be everything to everybody. Have your style what you what you like and what you're good at and don't try and please everyone you won't please everyone as I, as I said before um you know there are couples that want the sort of punky gothic type cake I don't do those you know my types of cakes are fairly classic sugar flowers 
um, white ivory kind of things. Someone who wants a, you know, a gothic with, you know, the corset thing and the skull and everything, they wouldn't come to me anyway, because that's not what's on my website. Um, but, but, you know, know what you're good at <clears throat> and, um, and help people to buy that. When I'm at wedding fairs, I don't do many. You're very welcome, Rissy. Um, what I, what, when I'm at a wedding fair, and I don't do very many um, for various reasons, um, but I just try and chat to, you know, the customers. I'm not trying to sell. I'm trying to help them to buy. So chatting to them about what type of wedding they're having, um, you know, what type of cake. It might be that they say, oh, we've got the cake person sorted. I say, oh, that's brilliant. You know, um, what kind of thing are you having? Oh, that's lovely. You know, all, you know, just chatting to people, making yourself known and making yourself available. OK, this is a good question. Are there any must ask questions at time of inquiry or treat as a normal cake inquiry? Um, I would say the must ask question, but the most important question, the one that you start with is when do you need the cake for? Because if you're not free on their wedding day, there's no point in asking anything else. <laughs> so that's the first one. Um, date of the wedding the second question that i would generally ask is how big or how many people is the cake to serve and then that will tell me what kind of size of cake they want okay now some i say brides because it's generally brides some brides have a really definite idea of the cake they want and it's a four tier cake for example now if they're only having 40 people at their wedding um that's going to be far too much cake so you advise them do you want dummy tears or um i can you know advise you on how to freeze what's left over you know, those kind of things so you're there helping them uh, helping them to buy but that's a really good question so i'd say date of the wedding uh, size of the cake um i mean things like flavors we, you know, can sort that out later, you know, send them a taster box or whatever, and then they can choose their flavours because that that's not something you need to know right at the start. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so once you've got those two, those two things sorted out, you can then go on to the kind of design that they, they want. If it sort of becomes apparent that they want something that you don't generally do or you're not comfortable in making, um you can say, oh, yeah, I'm afraid I, I don't um, I don't do that sort of cake. Um, but I can see if I can find someone to pass you on to that that can, you know, help them to buy. <laughs> um, so don't be afraid if they ask for you, you to, to produce something and you think, oh, gosh, I've not got the first clue how to, how to go about doing that. Um, I can't do that, but I can find you someone perhaps who can. OK, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> now what i'm coming on to now if any of you are thinking seriously of getting into the wedding cake um biz um and you think you'd need a little bit of a hand a little bit of support um i am running a course next month end of february two saturday mornings it's on online and it's all going to be recorded so you've got things to you know you can go back and watch afterwards. Um, the first Saturday morning will be what I've called the practical side. So it'll be, you know, recipes in the baking, uh, the leveling, the doweling, the stacking. Um, I'll cover buttercreaming, sugar pasting, a bit of ganache will be in there as well. I will cover um, some basic sort of decoration things like using royal icing, making sugar flowers, making drapes. It's going to be an action packed morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that will be the first morning. And what what I did last time I did this is I included um, something, um, a feature of a cake that was quite popular at the time. So it might be that you know, I look around the weeks before and think actually this this type of cake is is being asked for. So I'll I'll do a little bit of that. Um, 
so I'll, I'll give you the, the sort of tools to create cakes that are, are being asked for, if you like. And then the second Saturday, the second session will be the sort of the business side. So we'll go through terms and conditions and I've got a template um, and it's an up to date template that I've, I've rejigged um, for this particular purpose as well. Um, we'll talk about pricing. I've got a pricing calculator that I will talk you through specifically for wedding cakes. Um, we will talk about um, consultations, um, ordering the kinds of questions um, that you need to ask, the kind of information you need, um, all that kind of business side as well. So we'll talk about all that as well. Um, and as well as the, the two morning sessions, there will be a Facebook group for people that have signed up. So, you know, if you've got any questions um, as we go along or after the course, you know, once you start getting into the flow of things, there might be questions that you're not sure of. Um, I'll be there to help you as well. Um, so it's although it's online, it's a very sort of interactive um, and you'll have me as a support all the way along. Um, if you sign up before the end of this month, so next Monday evening, no pressure, um, but you will also get, where is it, a copy of my order book. Um, if you sign up after that point, you will get a, um, a download of one of the sheets that's in there um, because we talk about ordering and the questions are in there. Um, but order, you know, sign up before the end of next Monday evening and I'll send you a copy of this as well, a hard copy of that. Um, I use mine all the time. I was scribbling in it today, two or three inquiries came in. Um, so, yes, so that's the Wedding Cake Business course. Now, the details, where are we? Oh, where are we? Here it is. If you go onto my website... Um, either put that into the website, although it's very long-winded, that, isn't it? Or you can go to my website, anniebennett.co.uk, and if you look at the courses menu, the wedding cake one will drop down, click on that and have all the details, all the ins and outs. Um, the cost of it, it is £97 um, for the cost of that, but you do get all of that as, a, uh, as part of that. You get quite a lot of value in that. There's quite a few hours of teaching in that. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's it's a good value course um, and you will you will come away with all the skills that you need. Um, you might have to practice some of them, but you'll be given the basics um, to know what to do to then go on and um, start booking your own wedding couples. It's very exciting booking your own wedding couples um, and say, I'll be on hand to answer any questions, to give you some support. You know, once the bookings start coming in, I'll be there to help if you need any help. Um, so you'll have lots of support and backup for as long as you need it, really. Um, until you're com fully confident with your own wedding cake making. <clears throat> so there is the link. Um, there is also, I believe, oh, my goodness me, look at the time. I have waffled on. Um, in the Home Baking Business Community UK, I think I put a, a link in there. That should be in there by now. Um, so you can find that link and go through there if you like. Um, if you're a member of the Home Baking Professionals Society, um, you will get a discount if you want to come in. I know a lot of you did the, the one last time. Uh, but if you're a new member, you get a discount um, for coming into this one because it's not part of the usual um, uh, training um, because it's so intense. Um, but you will get a discount. So society members, you get a discount on that. Um, so there we are. If you've got any questions about the course or what it involves or you're not sure or whatever, uh, message me, email me. Where's my email? There's my email. Admin, that makes me sound very important, doesn't it? Admin at anniebennett.co.uk. Ask me any questions you like. I'm happy to help. See, I'm helping you to buy. <laughs> There we go. Oh, what's Alex said? 
undertook this course last year. It's so detailed and full of action. Every oh, thank you, Alex. Oh, bless you, Alex. You're a star. Yes, there's lots of templates and resources and things that you don't have to, you know, um, go away and find yourself. And I'll talk you through everything that I, I give you. Thank you, Alex. It's very kind of you to say that. Um, so there we are. So wedding cakes. So um, have a look at the details. Sign up before Monday evening. No pressure. Uh, and I will also send you a, an order book. Um, but it's say, if you're not sure, just ask me questions. I'm happy to, to you know, to give you some more information if you need it. All right, so me and my cat mug are off now to have a dinner. Um, thank you for joining me this evening. It's lovely to have you here. Um, I'm just trying to think what I put down for, oh, next week, yes. Next week's session, I, oh, you're very welcome, my lovely, you're very welcome. Um, Next week, I'm going to be talking about how to deal with, or not deal as the case may be, with competitors, oh, you're very welcome, Maddie, with competitors. There's been a couple of posts and comments in the, the group in recent weeks where people have been worried about, you know, the baker up the road is doing this or the baker down the road is doing that. So I'm going to, we're going to have a little bit of a chat about that. You know, what, what kind of things can you do to put your mind at ease to ease the stress if it's stressing you out that kind of thing okay so that's I think what we're talking about next week all right um so you're very welcome everybody it's lovely to be here um thank you for indulging my waffling I have waffled on far too long <laughs> I tried to keep it to half an hour and then I never do um so thank you for joining me have a look at all the info message me if you need any more info I'll be more than happy to help all right so, oh, yes, Alex. Yes, because there's a society um, session tomorrow morning as well. Um, so wonderful. I will see you soon, I hope. Take care. Have a lovely week. And hopefully I'll see you next week. All right. Toodaloo, everybody. <laughs>